I recently spent 24 hours in Buenos Aires, partly because I was under a time crunch, but mostly because I wanted to give myself the challenge of seeing how much I could see, learn, and do in such a little time. I had never set foot in the country before, and it was fun seeing what it was like there. So here it is, 24 hours in Buenos Aires. But the story really starts at 5 a.m. So it's 5 a.m. We're just about to leave. We have everything packed. And we're about to get hop in the car. And then we're taking a bus from Montevideo to Colonia. And then from Colonia, we're taking the Buquebus over the Rio de la Plata to Buenos Aires. It's going to be great. Very excited. While on the bus, I learned that Buenos Aires locals are referred to as porteños, people of the poor, because so many of the city's inhabitants historically arrived to Buenos Aires by boat. We are on the Bukibus right now, and it's actually really big. I had no idea it was going to be this big. There's a duty-free store in here, and a cafe, and the seats are really spacious. We got an entire row to ourselves, and it's really beautiful. And it's honestly moving so fast, and there's windows everywhere. It's beautiful. And I love that hundreds of years later, here I am, arriving to the country by boat, the same way they all did. And finally, fresh off the boat, and a little seasick, we walked from the port downtown. So we just walked out of uh, Puerto Madero, which is the port that we came in on the Buquebus, and it's already incredible over here. We arrived just around midday on a Friday, so the city was in full swing, and the first thing I noticed was how huge everything was and how alive the city felt. And first on the agenda was Plaza de Mayo. Okay, so we've been here in Buenos Aires for like 20 minutes so far. We walked from the port to Plaza de Mayo, which has the La Casa Rosada. It's pink, very pretty. What are your thoughts about the city so far? It's so pretty. Named after the May Revolution that led to Argentina's independence from the Spanish, the Plaza de Mayo is the oldest public square in Buenos Aires and is known as the center of the city. It has been at the heart and the scene of the most monumentous moments in Argentina's history. And the history of Buenos Aires, like many South American cities, is complex and long. The city was actually founded twice. First, by the Spaniard Pedro de Mendoza, who originally named the city Nuestra Señora Santa Maria del Buen Aire. Soon after its founding, the settlement began to be attacked by the natives of the region, and the inhabitants of the settlement, unable to defend the city and loan supplies, retreated upriver. Close to 50 years later, Juan de Garay led a more substantial expedition to the site and refounded the city in 1580. The entire region was governed from Lima. Gradually, due to the isolation and neglect of the Spanish crown, the porteños began to develop their own customs, cultures, and ways of life. Since our time here was pretty limited, we wasted none. Leaving Plaza de Mayo, we made our way through the city to our next destination. Finally arriving at Plaza Congreso, we saw the enormous Palacio de Senado, and it's honestly hard to describe how beautiful and enormous the building was. The city is crazy, everything is so big and it's all so beautiful. All the buildings have such intricate detail, it's insane. It's honestly the prettiest city I've ever been to. It's beautiful. Everything is so big. So I've been to quite a few big cities. I've been in Mexico City, I've been to New York City, but none of them have felt quite as big as Buenos Aires. And I think it's because there's so much open spaces between the buildings, you can really see how big everything Whereas in New York, you're kind of stuck between buildings. I don't know. The sun was shining all day, making the city glow and giving it a yellow hue. I couldn't believe how pristine and beautiful all the buildings looked. And my neck honestly started hurting from looking up so much. One thing I love about Latin American countries is the sense of community they all seem to have, and Buenos Aires is no exception. Outside, there are many, many people biking, eating, and just being together. Pretty soon after arriving, I realized it was probably a mistake to only stay 24 hours. Next, using the time we had left, we hopped into a cab and headed toward El Ateneo Gran Splendid, which in 2019 was named the most beautiful bookstore in the world. El Ateneo was opened in 1919 as a theater at first, then it was converted into a cinema, which actually showed the first movies with sound in Argentina. Now a bookstore, it has been beautifully preserved to keep the decoration and grandeur of the original theater. 
Driving south, we left Al Ateneo to explore more of the downtown area. We came across the largest avenue in Buenos Aires. Avenida 9 de Junio is the city's widest road and is one of the widest in the world actually. In the middle was surprisingly a huge park with an obelisk. So right now we are right in front of the obelisco. It's in the middle of the Calle Principal in Buenos Aires, the main road throughout Buenos Aires. And there's this beautiful big park in the middle of the road. It's really cool. So there's this side of the, of the road, the park, and then that side. And then in the center is the obelisco. It's very beautiful. We continued going up Avenida 9 de Junio, and just beyond the obelisk, we found another park. I think for me this year has been about learning to slow down and take time. And I think living and traveling around South America has really helped me. For so much of my youth, I've been told that I have to make my life happen now, to be successful and rich as soon as possible. But I've learned that there is time for everything, and I don't have to be any of those things to be happy. Even though Buenos Aires is huge and moves fast, there are still places and opportunities to partake in leisure, to take breaks and enjoy small moments of pleasure. Being in a city like this, one so old and so beautiful, reminds me that nothing so incredible can be rushed. This city wasn't built in a day, it slowly grew and developed at its own pace, and the people and culture reflect that. We took a little break to eat some food and recharge. Walking down a side street, we found a place that sold empanadas. So we ordered a few to go and took a sandwich with us as well. We ate in a park, taking the fresh air and the city. We kind of started to be attacked by this flock of very hungry pigeons, but I mean, with a view this incredible, it's not really worth complaining about. Next, we headed east in a goal to make our way back toward the port. We wandered through the streets aimlessly, enjoying the Buenos Aires afternoon. Until finally reaching Gararia Pacifico, arguably the most opulent shopping mall in Buenos Aires, it was designed and built in 1889. The now mall was the home of the Museo de Bellas Artes until 1940. Then it was made into a mall in 1990. It is now a National Historical Monument. It reminded me a lot of Milan, and it was even more beautiful in person, if you can believe it. The sun started to set pretty fast after that, so we decided to end our day in Buenos Aires at Café Vernano. Going upstairs and choosing a table by the window, we ordered some drinks. How is it? Really good. Oh, yum. We ended our night looking out the window and onto the street below, watching all the people go by, absorbing all that happened to us that day in Buenos Aires. So that was my 24 hours in Buenos Aires. I tried to make the most of my time there and I hope that you enjoyed the video. I know I had a really fun time filming it and I think that that energy really comes through in the video. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe and like. Anyway, thank you. I like your park job. <laughs> One thing that I have noticed about the city so far is that it's very windy. Shh. 
that was my 24 hours 